This is ABC 15 mornings. As a new school year gets underway in East Valley District now dealing with a coronavirus outbreak among staff members. Plus, the votes are still being counted, but we are seeing some of the first results coming in from Arizona's historic primary election yesterday. We say good morning to you on this Wednesday, 6 o'clock. Now Nick Saletti here in the newsroom. Kaylee O'Kelly will be along in just a few minutes. She actually has an interview with Senator Martha McSally, who won quite handily yesterday in the primary and will move on to face off against Democrat Mark Kelly. In the meantime, before we get to those headlines, let's talk about your most accurate forecast. Meteorologist Iris and Rocio joining us from home. Social distancing. Iris, the good news is not a weather action day, but the bad news is it's, it's still pretty hot out there. <laughs> I know it's not going to change that much. That's for sure. Yesterday we hit a high of 111. Today we're hitting 110. So not a huge difference when it comes to those temperatures. So even though we are no longer under that heat warning, you still have to keep those heat safety precautions in mind and know that our hot and dry conditions here in the valley are going to stick around. We're also introducing an increased wildfire danger across northern Arizona. And this upcoming weekend, temperatures are going to be heating back up again. Right now, though, if you're stepping outside, here's a live look with our Mayo Clinic Valley Camp. The sun shining brightly, a few clouds across the eastern half of the valley. Temperatures this morning have been fairly warm with temperatures mainly in the 80s to 90s. Phoenix down to about 90 degrees right now with that dew point in the mid-50s, so a little bit of moisture out there. Certainly not enough for storm chances, though. We'll stay dry today. That high temperature hits 110, but that means we'll see those first hundreds of the day by around 11 o'clock this morning again. We'll talk about where temperatures go the rest of the week. We do see another slight drop these next few days. I'll show you those temperatures in that seven-day forecast. For now, though, Chelsea Davis has an update on our drives. Yes, exactly. Thanks, Iris. I'm watching the Accident Law Group traffic maps. I'm going to show you these first, and then we'll go to an ADOT camera. But Loop 202 Santan in the westbound direction. Before you try to connect on I-10 westbound, we had a car fire. The fire's out now. The smoke is gone. Crews are out there just responding, and we see the right lanes, plural now, blocked. And But people are still able to get by. However, if you don't want to deal with any of it, though I am still seeing green flows, you could exit sooner at McClintock Drive and maybe use Chandler Boulevard or Ray to get by and Instead. Also, heads up, US 60 westbound at Ellsworth. We have a small crash there on the off ramp, kind of in the Gore Point area. Um, ADOT crews are going to have to do some guardrail repair since a vehicle struck that at that area but we're not seeing any delays overall so lots of green there too west side of town north valley overall quiet but let's look at that adot camera if you do travel on loop 202 santan westbound near kyrene you're still going to see crews responding from that earlier car fire you will be able to still access i-10 westbound people are just using the gore point area and kind of driving their way around to make that transition ramp all right, Chelsea, thanks. As Arizona passes 180,000 coronavirus cases and 3,800 deaths. Today, Governor Doug Ducey is in D.C. to meet with President Donald Trump to discuss our state's pandemic response. The governor and the president will talk about stopping the spread of COVID-19 and how to reignite the economy. Tomorrow, Governor Ducey will meet with other governors to discuss the ongoing pandemic in their states. This morning, the state's second largest school district, Chandler Unified, begins remote learning. Other districts are starting today, including Buckeye and Cave Creek. In a matter of days, the State Department of Health Services will release some new guidelines for schools to follow to try to resume that in-person learning. But this week, one district in the East Valley already dealing with multiple cases of COVID-19. Queen Creek Unified says several employees have tested positive. The district is having educators teach virtually from campus and we're told leaders are still holding in-person meetings. It's hard knowing that we have a board and an administration that is willing to just go put them into a dangerous situation without really having a plan on what's going to happen when people start to be getting sick. The district is scheduled to resume in-person learning on August 17th. That could change, though, once the new state guidelines are released. I'm sorry, but it's a fantasy. An Arizona superintendent putting his opinion out there for the world to see, writing an op-ed on reopening schools here after a teacher in his district died from the coronavirus while teaching summer school. Mark Thompson joining us now with a, a new interview from this superintendent. Mark, what is he saying this morning? Good morning to you, Nick. Well, Jeff Gregorich, he works for the Hayden Winkleman School District. That's in Gila County. And we've heard from him several times over the past couple of weeks. And one of his teachers, as you mentioned, Kimberly Bird, she died from the virus back in June. And over the weekend, the superintendent published an opinion in the Washington Post speaking about how 11% of his staff 
came down with the positive cases of COVID-19. Many of those teachers considering retirement now at the school reopens, but the district also facing some budget cuts if they don't. Here's one of the quotes from that piece. But every time I start to play out what it looks like on August 17th, I get sick to my stomach. More than a quarter of our students live with grandparents. These kids could very easily catch this virus, spread it, and bring it back home. It is not safe. There is no way it can be safe. Superintendent Hoffman, you know, we, has talked to, to me now a number of times, and um, she understands the situation. and. Uh, and she was very strong in her statement that she's come out and uh, don't doesn't feel it's safe. And um, I say Governor Ducey has a hard decision to make. You know, he runs the the state economy, and um, and he's done a great job for for education over the last three years. So I know his heart's there, but his decisions, uh, you know, he's got um, a lot of pressure to to open up, and so. You know, there's two sides of this issue. Now, Gregorich says he doesn't want to point the finger at anyone. He just wants everyone to remain safe. State Superintendent Kathy Hoffman, she has come out after our report saying that the district it may qualify for a waiver to help offset some of those costs if they do have to open back to in-person learning. Reporting live this morning, Mark Thompson, ABC 15, Arizona. Back to you. Yeah, Mark, still uh, so many questions and concerns for parents and these districts. Meantime, the final results are still being tabulated, but we are getting a better picture of who is going on to the November general election following Arizona's primary yesterday. John Genovese live in downtown Phoenix this morning. And John now starts that final sprint to November 3rd. Yeah, Nick, as if this year hasn't already been a whirlwind, the general election will be here faster than you think. Several contentious races we are watching right now, so let's get right to them. Senator Martha McSally, as expected, defeating her Republican challenger yesterday, and we've seen ads all over television for months between the senator and her Democratic challenger, Mark Kelly. Now, besides the presidency, that race might be the most watched race across the country. In Scottsdale, Dr. Heral Tempernini will take on incumbent David Schweikert. That is for Congressional District 6. And two years ago, Tempernini lost in District 8 against Representative Debbie Lesko. And one of the closest races this morning, till still too close to call, is on the Republican side for Maricopa County Sheriff. Joe Arpaio trails Jerry Sheridan by less than 600 votes. Sheridan previously worked as Arpaio's deputy chief, and whoever wins that race will face Democrat Paul Penzone. So obviously a lot that we are watching in record turnout in yesterday's primary election. Again, the votes still being tabulated as we speak. So as these results come in throughout the morning, guys, we will, of course, be passing along updates both on air and online. All right, our John Genovese live for us this morning. Thank you so much. These ne next 90 days are going to go quickly here as we charge toward the November election. And in 90 days, voters will be deciding between Senator Martha McSally and her Democratic challenger, Mark Kelly. This morning, the senator joins us. She is from Washington. And right out of the gate here, Senator, a lot of voters here in Arizona have a huge responsibility because the outcome here is essentially going to decide who has control of the Senate. Good morning. Good morning, Kaylee. Yes, that's true. In, in less than 70 days, Arizonans will be voting. And this is the most consequential election in our lifetime. And our race will decide the Senate majority and the direction of the country. That's why I'm challenging my opponent, Mark Kelly, to seven debates. Voters deserve to know where he stands on positions. Uh, he's been hiding in a bunker. And we need to make sure that they understand it's about who do you trust to get the economy going again? It's about who do you trust to keep your family safe and keep our country safe? Uh, and the radical left agenda that we've seen come out of his party is so extreme and out of step with Arizonans. And Arizonans deserve to know the implications of this very important choice. Well, you say seven debates. Would that be, uh, what, three here, what, Phoenix and Tucson? But you also want to go into some rural communities. We'll talk more about that and potentially something on the national stage because Arizona is a battleground state. We know that the most recent OH Predictive Insights poll is showing that jobs and the economy are top issues for Arizonans. Our unemployment rate, double digits right now. How can we get people back to work? Kaylee, we had a strong economy before this once in a century pandemic hit. So we know what works. It's lower taxes, it's less regulations, 
There are people up and down my street all over Arizona that right now have been asked not to work because of this pandemic. And we're giving them the relief. There needs to be support out there. But we know what it's going to take. We will emerge stronger. There's a great American comeback right in front of us. But it's not with what Joe Biden and Mark Kelly are selling, which is raising your taxes, more regulations, government takeover of health care. These things are not going to help hardworking Arizonans. But we've already shown with our record what works with a strong economy, and we're going to do it again. We know that you're working on the opportunity zones here in the greater Phoenix metro area. Let's talk about the classroom. This is a huge issue for parents. Where do you stand on getting kids safely back to school right now? Well, I'm deeply concerned about the impact on kids not being in the classroom, and it's not one size fits all. Uh, there needs to be a way for kids, especially with special needs and others who parents are single parents and nurses, essential workers, for their kids to be able to safely return to the classroom with parent choice. Uh, so they need that support. We're trying to provide some resources there to support uh, schools as they're trying to get back in the classroom and to bridge the digital divide uh, for those who have struggled in rural and Native American areas. But I'm concerned about the health impacts of kids not being in the classroom and the nutrition and uh, child abuse that's not being reported and other things. So we need to work together to ensure kids have the best opportunity to be able to learn as soon as possible. So you say there's an, there are advantages to getting kids back to school as long as they're there safely. And we know that that is being looked at by our governor. Um, do you want to talk about mail-in ballots really quick? Where are you on this? Because this is a hot button issue as well. Well, in Arizona, we've grown into a strong, uh, you know, early voting system. Uh, there's checks and balances. There's ways that you can check to make sure your ballot has been received and the signature has been accepted. Uh, that's very different. We've grown into this over the years with a lot of voter education. So we all know when to get your ballot in and how to do that and, and the oversight of the process. That's very different than what we're seeing in other states where they're just saying, Let's mail a ballot out to everybody who's on the voter rolls with no checks to that. There really are concerns about not having the infrastructure and the oversight that we have here in Arizona. Okay, so thank you very much for being here. We know that it is a busy morning for you. Um, again, shared right here first on ABC 15 Mornings, and we appreciate that. Senator McSally, you are challenging your Democratic challenger, Mark Kelly, to seven debates. He will be here with us a little later. So who knows, maybe he will be accepting that challenge right here on our air as well. Thank you for oh, your time. I hope so. The voters deserve to know his positions on things. He hasn't shared them yet. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you for your time. So there you have it, Thank Nick. Thank you. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Uh, an interesting challenge from Senator McSally for her Democratic challenger, Mark Kelly, and first right here on our morning show. Yeah, and, and 90 days left till the general election, and we know November 3rd is going to be here before we know it. Meantime, we are committed to giving all candidates equal time. So you just heard from Senator Martha McSally. This morning, we're going to speak with her challenger, Democrat Captain Mark Kelly. He will be joined, uh, we will be joined with him at 730 during ABC 15 mornings on the CW61 Arizona. And as we count down to the general election, ABC 15 has three promises for you. We will give you a voice. We will give you the facts and we will cut through the noise to help you make informed decisions. Meantime, only on ABC 15 mornings, how do you get your money back from sites like Airbnb or VRBO? Joe Ducey with an important message for anybody looking at those popular vacation rentals. We're back after this. ABC 15 Desert Drive Time, sponsored by Accident Law Group. Welcome back everybody. Looking for the latest updates for our roadways here. With a wide view of our accident law group traffic maps, we still have a lot of green out there overall, especially traveling from the west side of town on I-10, maybe even Loop 101, the 303 I-17, the 51 pretty clear. East Valley, we have some stuff going on. Let's talk about the high country too. I-17 southbound. This is kind of between Bloody Basin and Badger Springs Road. Um, we've been hearing reports of a brush fire and you'll see it on that southbound side near I-17. So possibly smoke and low visibility there though overall we're still looking at completely green flows at this point so I'm not tracking delays I'll let you know if that changes so let's hop on over to the east side of town and talk about a couple things quickly so if you go on US 60 and you travel in that uh, westbound direction and you're getting closer to Ellsworth right at the off ramp at the Gore Point area is where that crash is still in the clearing stages and whatever car was involved in this hit 
the guardrail. So ADOT crews are going to have to be out there to repair that too. But at this point, you can still use the off-ramp. So we're not tracking any delays on the main lanes of US-60 or even for that off-ramp at this point. Loop 202 Santan in the westbound direction at Kyrene. This is before you try to connect onto I-10 and go north or westbound. Uh, we had an earlier car fire. All the lanes are back open. We did see one vehicle that was still lingering out there. We had a DPS vehicle and then also the uh, car fire vehicle that is now on a tow truck. So this is in the clearing stages. I'll let you know if anything else happens there, but it should be gone momentarily. Okay, thanks, Chelsea. Let's talk about that most accurate forecast here at 617. I'm watching those temperatures this morning. It's been a little bit of a warm start, but some good news. We did not set a record this morning. The record stands for the warmest low temperature ever recorded on this date. It stands at 95. Luckily, we've dropped as low as 90 degrees, so no record. However, we've got to keep watching that temperature. If we don't drop below 90, we're going to add another day to that already record count of the most days with lows in the 90s. So far this year, we're at 18 days. And again, if we don't drop below 90 this morning, we could see day 19 added to this count. Now, the other count that we're watching, that count of 110 plus daytime highs. So far this year, we're at 31 days. That's as of yesterday. The all-time record for the most in a single year is 33 days. And today could be day 32 with more 110 plus days in our seven-day forecast. Now, as you step outside, we're not in the triple digits yet, but we will be there in a few hours. Right now, it's mainly 80s across much of the valley. Again, Phoenix, the exception, still holding on 90 degrees. And Wickenburg, you're actually down into the 70s, and you've been in the 70s at least for the last few hours. You're right at 79. We're waking up to 82 in Queen Creek, 81 right now in Apache Junction, mid-80s in Levine and Glendale, where we're at 85 degrees, and it's in the upper 80s in Goodyear. Surprise, good morning. You're checking in at 85. As you look at those conditions across the state, waking up to temperatures right around 50 degrees in Flagstaff. Upper 40s though with the Grand Canyon. Mid 60s in Payson and low 70s in Sedona with low 60s in Shellow. Still some hazy conditions across our state thanks to wildfires. One burning in California. That's sending some smoke into our state still. And as you look at that forecast for smoke today, we're going to continue to see coming that, that smoke kind of flowing across our skies. We also have a fire in the San Carlos Apache Reservation in eastern Arizona. That's sending smoke into the White Mountains. It's possible there's a fire in northern Mexico too that's sending some smoke into our state. However, for the valley, that haze is mainly higher up in the atmosphere. So it's not impacting the air quality here at the surface where we breathe it in. Air quality in the moderate range, ozone and particulates are main pollutants here at the surface. Don't forget that sunblock today. Our burn time is at under 10 minutes once again. Our high temperature near 110, pretty much across the valley. 110 in Mesa, 109 in Glendale, 108 in Deer Valley. And across the state, we'll also reach 110 in Bullhead City and Yuma will top out at 111. We're in the upper 90s today in Sedona, near 100 today in Page, and we could hit 100 in Globe. After today, that temperature drops a little bit further, not much, but at least below 110 for Thursday and Friday at 108 to 109. Overnight lows will also get a little more comfortable down into the low to mid 80s each day. Then we heat back up this weekend with highs near 111 to 112. And for now, no valley rain chances in sight. Okay, Iris, thank you. Let's get to some of your top stories on this Wednesday. New details in that deadly explosion in Beirut, Lebanon. The Prime Minister saying overnight a warehouse was storing 2,700 tons of confiscated ammonium nitrate. It had been there for six years with no safety measures in place. Investigators aren't saying whether the blast was intentional, only saying those responsible will be held accountable. More than 100 people there have been killed. The CDC sounding the alarm about the ret return of acute flaccid myelitis. That's that rare disease, mostly impacting children. It does peak now. We're learning every two years between August and November, and it can lead to permanent paralysis and other serious health implications. Common symptoms, by the way, loss of reflexes and sudden leg or arm weakness. Well, the conversation around protective gear is expanding. A lot of parents are preparing for our kids to go back to the classroom and wondering if we should be making sure the kiddos are wearing face shields instead of masks. For some of the kids, the mask just isn't going to work. And in those cases, a face shield can be considered. But I think it needs to be understood that that's not the default. If you are wearing a shield, the, the, uh, the respiratory secretions that might be coming from your mouth or nose are not going to be as well contained. 
Infectious disease experts say there isn't enough data yet on how much protection a face shield provides. They do have some advantages though uh, over masks. Face shields can be reused indefinitely. They are easier to clean and they do help to prevent touching of your face. Booker, this is for the win. Got it. Wow. <laughs> And with that, the Phoenix Suns are 3-0 and inside the Orlando bubble. Deep Booker, Devin Booker hitting the game-winning shot just before the buzzer. Look at him there, so happy. The Suns beat the Clippers 117-115. to It was a nail-biter. Tomorrow, the Suns take on Indiana. They are on a roll. It's awesome. All right, getting Arizona kids back to school safer. Right now, thousands of parents are getting ready for the first day of school. New for you this morning, how one district is working to bridge the gap between the haves and the have-nots. 626 new this morning. Did you ever use Google Plus? You can now apply for money from a settlement. A class action lawsuit was filed last year when the social network shut down amid privacy concerns. Former users can file a claim to get up to $12 from the $7.5 million settlement. A major move by Disney this morning. The company decided to skip theaters with one of its big releases. After several delays because of the pandemic, Mulan will be available on the streaming service Disney Plus September 4th. You're going to have to pay extra for it, though. It's going to cost 30 bucks to rent. Disney says the decision is not necessarily a blueprint for future movie releases. I'm old enough to remember the cartoon <laughs> release when that came out. I think it was the late 90s. Hey, only on ABC 15 mornings, the pandemic forcing an Arizona family to cancel their vacation plans, but they couldn't get their money back. Joe Ducey stepping in to take action and fight for them ahead of a situation that really could happen to any of us. And giving you the facts, cutting through the noise. This morning, whew, election season is about to really rev up. What the issues are that each party will be taking to the voters here in Arizona.